Hi and welcome back to Doc Off Call. My name is Maddie. I'm a GP working up in the Lake District. Today we're going to be talking about mobile phones. Now it's become almost an essential in my everyday practice as a GP and makes up an essential component of my doctor's bag. So today we're going to be talking about the top five apps I have on my mobile that allow me to work more efficiently as a doctor. Now if you're new to the channel, if I could ask you to um, give us a like and also subscribe down below. Uh, it really helps out the channel and ensures that you don't miss out on any future uploads from Doc Off Call. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword. And this was of course true in medical practice with many doctors using the pen daily just to prescribe medications that could be life-saving for some of our patients. Now, I'm not saying I'm putting the pen to a side for my mobile phone. However, my mobile phone has come particularly handy in consultation, allowing me to enhance the delivery of my patient's care. So here are my top five apps. So the first app we're gonna be talking about is one called MediCalc. Now, I have to admit, I use MediCalc daily. I use it both in consultation with my patients, um, but also out on home visits and sometimes even on a telephone triage. So basically what MediCalc is, it's a catalogue of all of the calculations that we use to determine a patient's risk uh, on a daily basis. And examples of those are things like the Wells criteria for a DVT or Wells criteria for a PE, but it also includes um, a lot of other calculations for lots of different specialties. Now, a good thing about this um, app is that it's very user friendly. Um, all you need to do is swipe down across the different risk factors um, and then at the end it gives you the uh, patient score and what that means in terms of uh, clinical risk to your patient. So you can communicate that across in consultation. Now, why I find this app handy is because there are an endless amount of calculations that um, need to be remembered and rather than committing those to memory or standing scratching your head in doubt as to what was that last component of the DVT uh, risk, you can just take it out of your pocket, it's there on your phone, you can do the calculation quickly and efficiently and hopefully um, determine your patient's risk and give them the correct treatment. Now app two that I'm going to talk about is a very handy uh, application and it's one that really all doctors should have uh, on their mobile phones and that is the BNF. So the BNF, the British National Formulary, is our um, book on the medications that we prescribe. Um, now the reason why this app is good is because um, again it's very much like the previous, it's a catalogue with all the medications um, that we can prescribe and you can go through the search part of the app searching for the medication you're looking for. It tells you the indication as well as the doses for the different age groups um, but then also you can go through handy parts such as you know cautions, side effects of medications, monitoring that you'd need to do of that medication for that patient and overall it's one of those which I'm constantly referring back to and having it handy as an application on my phone rather than the thick book that we used to have to search for on the medical ward is, uh, is very handy. So it's definitely an essential for all doctors out there, in fact for other healthcare staff who might be prescribers as well, I'd really encourage you downloading it and it's free. Now the third application that I'm going to be talking about is one that I've only recently um, come to use and that application is MicroGuide. So MicroGuide is an application which basically gives you the uh, regional um, antibiotic or antimicrobial guidelines for the various types of infection that you'll be seeing. And it's really handy because it gives you the first line treatment, second line treatment, and then if your patients have any particular allergies, what alternative uh, antibiotics that you can prescribe also. And what I really like about this app is that it's separated up into uh, adult microbials and then pediatric microbials. And when you go into each one of those, it then separates out um, the antibiotic prescribing based on body systems. So you've got respiratory, you've got skin, you've got head and neck, you've got genital urinary. So it's really sort of systematic and you can really get your answers quite quickly just through a few clicks through this app. And a couple of other handy aspects of this app are that they've got useful resources in there, such as contact numbers, 
um, for your regional microbiologist. Um, and it also has treatment of some of the um, common emergencies, such as things like neutropenic sepsis or general sepsis. Um, and it acts as a good revision tool to make sure that you're not missing any, anything out when you're treating your patients. Now, the fourth app I have on my phone, which I have to say comes in handy every day, is uh, it's not actually an application, but it's something which I've saved to my home screen in the format of an application. And this is really, this has been a really handy thing to do, and that is the NICE CKS guidelines. So as a previous GP trainee, um, every day was a learning day, and really it still is. And making sure that you're prescribing in line with the up-to-date evidence base is really handy. So having those NICE CKS guidelines to hand um, has been an essential component of my training as a doctor. Now, what I like about the NICE CKS guidance is that it gives you a step-by-step -step approach to diagnosing, investigating, and then going on to management of the various conditions that you're gonna see in primary care. And the one that I think really illustrates this well is the management of hypertension or high blood pressure where it gives you all the parameters for the different stages of high blood pressure, and telling you what investigations that you need to do, and then what treatment uh, you need to give to the various populations within your community. So for any trainee doctors out there um, who are wanting to work in line with the NICE guidelines, I would really recommend downloading the NICE CKS guidance. And lastly, the final app I'm gonna talk about today, which isn't a medical application as such, um, but rather it does enhance my day-to-day -day working as a GP, and that is Evernote. Now, Evernote is actually a really dynamic uh, note-keeping app, um, and it can be used for various professions. Now, what I use Evernote for day-to-day -day is if I come across a really handy guideline, or I'm sitting in a lecture theatre and they've given out notes, knowing me, I'm likely to either lose that note or throw it away. So instead what I do is I take a snap on my phone, I then save it into Evernote with a title telling me to read or do whatever it is that I need to do, and then it acts as a quick reference in the future if I'm looking for that niche bit of information that I took a photo on in one of those lectures that I had during my training. Now that's just one way that in which I use Evernote. I also use it in my day-to-day -day life uh, remembering things like projects that I'm working on, if there's things that I need to purchase, or if it's just making a, a physical note of a thought that I've had during the day. Now, a good thing about it is that it actually synchronizes to a desktop application, which you can also have on your laptop. So if, you've, uh, if you don't have your mobile phone with you, you'll also have that backed up on the application on your laptop as well. So those are my five top apps on my mobile phone um, that I use daily uh, as a doctor. Um, I hope that they will be useful for you and I'd highly recommend you downloading them as well. If you have also found those applications handy, um, please do leave a comment down below. Otherwise, if I could get you to like and subscribe, it just ensures that you don't miss out on any future uploads and it really does help me out on the channel um, putting out more content like this. Now, if you have any specific questions or you have any specific suggestions for future videos, please leave that down in the comments below and I will try and do my best to put one of those videos out for you. Um, but otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please give us a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.